Hey guys, what's up? I thought I'd share with you this backpack that I found at my workplace. Uh, it was stuffed in a trash can and I took it home, cleaned it up, and I uh, did some research on it and it turns out to be a Swiss Army uh, salt and pepper rucksack. Um, they call it salt and pepper because of the pattern of the canvas that they used to, to make it. But uh, it's in pretty good shape. The leather um, straps are in decent shape. They're still usable. Uh, it's some of the uh, leather straps are cracked here and there, but um, I plan on treating it with some Obanoffs here in a little bit. Uh, bring it back to life. Um, so yeah, there wasn't a lot wrong with it, except for on the back here. Um, I just have these straps unbuckled for now. But uh, on this strap here, when I found it, it had all these colorful zip ties that I cut off uh, holding these two straps together. There was a hole right through these two pieces of leather. They just had zip ties uh, holding it together. So uh, from pictures that I've seen on the internet, um, I believe they had like some sort of a, I don't know, a ri rivet here that allowed this to swivel but I didn't have a rivet like that so what I did is I uh, on some of my knife sheaths they come with this piece of leather here that allows you to have a uh, the sheath to I think they call it a, a dangler sheath that dangles below the belt and um, they use <clears throat> I'm not sure the exact name of this but they have this type of rivet here that um, is screwed into one another like that so I just I took this and I used it here like that uh, with a couple washers and I used a um, I just cut a small piece of copper to create sort of a uh, collar that goes around here Oops. it goes around like that to sort of take up the space because um, the the hole in the leather was kind of big so I just I added a little bit of thickness to this here to uh, fill in that gap and uh, it worked out pretty good as you can see I got the washer there that way the rivet doesn't fall through same thing on the other side not focusing come on well you guys can kind of see it but anyway that was a quick easy fix I right, swivels on the other side on this side it has a different setup and um, from pictures I've seen I thought this was sort of an add-on that someone did themselves but it's actually the the way they did it the way they made it so why they had a buckle on this side and sort of a pivoting rivet on this side I don't know if you guys no, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I'm definitely interested in why they uh, sort of made it this way. So let me know if you guys do know. Um, the other repair was on this leather uh, strap buckle right here. The threads were coming out, so I just took some artificial sinew and I sewed it back down. I uh, sort of used the saddle stitch with uh, another sort of stitch method, whatever you call it, but it, it works. It's back on there and it's holding pretty good. Uh, other than that, everything else looks okay. Um, <clears throat> on the front here, the stitching on this leather pad here is coming off, but that's not a big deal. So, other than that, those two things right there and right there, it's in decent shape for how old it is. Um, by the way, the um, research that I did to tell how old these packs go back, or uh, the, when they were made, um, some of them had their the dates stamped onto the straps here, or on this side, or on these straps. I'm not sure um, which strap it was, but the only markings I found 
or this one right here and the one on the back which I believe it does have a date I could be wrong though get these out of the way it's right here there's a I guess that's the name of the pack or the maker of the pack right there and below it it's stamped 66 so I'm guessing that is the year of when this pack was made uh, 1966 so uh, yeah pretty nice pack I tried it on uh, it's definitely a heavy-duty canvas it has this inner flap here nice big bucket style backpack which is nice um, yeah I could add a piece of paracord here to make a cinch it down when I want to. Um, like I said the leather is in kind of rough shape but hopefully when I treat it with this uh, Obanoff's leather oil it'll bring some life back into it and uh, yeah so that's the next step and uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright so before I put that oil on it I thought I'd show you guys a close up of the bottom here or do sort of like a before and after shot. Okay guys, I just finished putting uh, the oil on. I did a second coat on most of the straps here, especially the shoulder straps or shoulder pads here. Um, it just needed it. And uh, turned out nice, darkened up the leather quite a bit. Let it soak in a little bit more. Uh, leather has been softening up, which is really nice. Uh, the bottom looks good. I'll do a before and after shot. So it darkened up really nicely. Looks really good. I may treat it with some of Obanoff's uh, heavy duty uh, leather preservative. It's uh, more of a wax that you rub on. And I may treat it with that, but for now I'm going to call that good. At least I have something on there protecting it, preserving it. And um, yeah, so. There it is. Plan on using this in the future. Go hunting or camping or whatever. I take this along. And uh, there she is. So, guys, as always, thanks for watching and subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.